today's video, we're going to be smelting down these catalytic converters, trying to recover the platinum, palladium, and rhodium. And this is the ceramic honeycomb matrix. And the whole surface of this ceramic is impregnated with platinum, palladium, and rhodium that acts as a catalyst. So when your exhaust goes through, it burns up the unburnt fuel and all the other stuff. The first thing we're going to do here is screen this down to, I think this is 16 or 20 mesh. We're looking for maybe 50 grams here. So I'm going to add 50 grams of anhydrous borax. Then we'll add 50 grams of soda ash and then 25 grams of silica sand. Now I'm going to add 25 grams of bismuth oxide and this is going to act as our collector metal. I'm going to add some cooking flour. The cooking flour is gonna act as carbon, and when the carbon comes in contact with the bismuth oxide, it's gonna pull the oxygen off the bismuth oxide and form CO2, and the bismuth is gonna be reduced to metal, and we'll be able to alloy with our precious metals. And so what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a little piece of bismuth metal floating along, liquid. It's gonna attach itself to the platinum or palladium or rhodium. Once it's attached, it forms an alloy with that, so you have a bismuth platinum alloy it will reduce the melting point and then it will be able to all be liquid and collect down at the bottom of our crucible. We're hoping for a nice little bismuth button here. And there it is. Oh, just a beautiful button. Look at how nice and shiny that is. Very nice, 21 grams, just about what you'd expect. If we reduced every single bismuth atom out of that oxide, we would end up with about 22 grams. So we are right there, it worked really, really well. Let's hope our platinum, palladium, and rhodium is in this little button. So now what we're gonna do with our button is we're gonna put it in this cupel, we're gonna put it in a furnace and heat it up to about 1900 or 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. The bismuth in here is gonna melt, is gonna react with the oxygen in the furnace, in the environment, and it's gonna oxidize the surface of the puddle. Now the cupel can't absorb metal, but it absorbs metal oxides really well, and the bismuth is gonna continue to oxidize until the melting point of the alloy gets past the temperature of the furnace, and at that point, the button's gonna freeze. So in 50 grams, we got 0 0.033 grams. That doesn't seem very good, does it? Well, I'm pretty disappointed in that last result. But I went home, I did some reading, and I found an article that's done some experimenting with using pyrite as a collector for the precious metals and catalytic converters. So we're gonna do a similar thing. We're gonna take 50 grams of the catalytic converters. We'll add 50 grams of pyrite. And this isn't 100% pyrite, so we're gonna have a little bit of loss. So our matte layer won't add up to exactly 50 grams. I actually added 100 grams of borax just because it didn't look like I had much flux in there with only 50 grams. So I'm gonna put it in a nice clean crucible back into the furnace, and we'll smelt it. Now in this paper, it says that 99% of the platinum and palladium can be recovered and 97% of the rhodium can be recovered with this method. I got my charge in the furnace, but let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. Iron and nickel are a great collector of platinum group metals. And typically you have to get them super hot to melt the platinum and get it all to collect down the bottom. There's something going on with the iron sulfide that you get the collection ability of the iron, but the iron sulfide is a much lower melting temperature and we can do it in the temperatures of our propane furnace. I can't give you all the details because I couldn't read the full article. So if somebody has it, please send it to me. I'll leave a link down in the description below where I got the articles. I wanna assay the raw material, then I wanna assay the slag after I'm done smelting it, and I wanna make sure I'm not losing any. Because if my slag assays hardly any precious metals, then I'll know everything's collected down in that matte layer. PGM assays are super expensive. They're about $250 a piece. So if you guys wanna support me, I've got a Patreon page, or you can give me a super thanks through YouTube, because this is gonna be really expensive, and I'm giving all this information out there for free. I'd really appreciate it. The first smelt I did was just iron pyrite. It didn't have any collector metal in it at all. So the next smelt, I wanna take the same amount of material, the same flux, and I wanna add about 10 grams of copper to it. And that way, we can have a collector metal in there. And with that copper collector, it's all gonna end up in the mat as a copper sulfide, 
but once I get that matte, I can reduce the copper, mix up a flux that will absorb the iron rich sulfide matte, and hopefully we'll be left with a copper button with all of our precious metals that we can then reduce in our cupelling furnace and recover a bead of precious metals. And here's our pour with the 10 grams of copper collector. Oh man, look at that. That is just beautiful. Beautiful, Matt. Oh, it's still pretty hot though. Man, that's pretty. And here's our slag, super glassy. No beads or anything in there. It's like the perfect smelt. Hopefully this works. If this works, then it's, it's pretty darn easy to do. So the previous mat was 28. Here's the copper collector. So we should have about 38, 40. So 40 grams, that, that pencil is pretty darn good. And hopefully there's a half a gram of platinum, palladium, and rhodium in there. Well, I'm pretty excited because we got two really good results. One with the iron pyrite by itself, and the other one where I added a little bit of copper to it. Both really good separation. But now I added that copper because I want to try and get the platinum out of the mat, or at least the copper and the platinum together. So I'm going to add 50 grams of anhydrous borax. I'm going to add 50 grams of soda ash. I'm gonna add 25 grams of silica sand. Then I'm gonna add nails into it to reduce it all down to FES. And that way the FES is soluble in the slag with the soda ash and our copper and our precious metals should collect down at the bottom as a molten metal bead that we can then refine the precious metals out of later. We'll see what happens. I didn't see any metal pour out of there. So I'm a little concerned about that. Ideally, what would have happened is the iron nails will reduce the copper to metal. So we should not have any mat. Oh, there's a ton of mat. Well, that didn't work very well, but we got our, got our mat back. Well, we keep getting our really nice glassy slag, so we're doing something right there, but our mat did not cooperate on that smell. Let's see how much it weighs. I think we started with 40 grams, 30, 31. So we reduced it a little bit, but not enough. Well, it's quite hard. I've broken it up into a couple different pieces there to increase the surface area. I'm gonna leave it overnight or a couple days and see if uh, it reacts to the water in the air and just kind of falls apart and makes that powder we've seen in the past. Well, I can tell you we're finding a lot of ways that don't work. Here's what happened to our mat after it sat for a couple days. I was hoping it would fall apart, but it's still pretty darn hard. But this is what I wanted to happen. This is our iron mat without any copper. And once it gets exposed to the water and the air, it just falls apart into that powder that you can then recycle and, and reuse again. That's what I wanted to have happen. So there's a couple things that could have happened here. One is I put that whole piece of copper iron mat right into the top of the smelt. And ideally you'd want that all powdered up so you have a lot of surface area. The other thing that could have happened is I maybe didn't add enough soda ash to dissolve all that stuff, or maybe I didn't give it enough time in the furnace with the iron nails. But whatever it is, it's just too difficult. There's too many things that can go wrong. So what I wanna do now is I wanna do the same experiment, but instead of using copper, I'm gonna use 10 or maybe 20 grams of silver. Here's our silver we're gonna use. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add 20 grams. That way we'll have enough silver that even if we lose a little bit to the mat, we're gonna have a button at the bottom, hopefully. Cross your fingers. Another nice clean crucible, and hopefully third time's the charm here. All right, another moment of truth. Cross your fingers, we got a silver bead here. Hmm, beautiful mat again. I'm hoping there's a little bit of silver right here at the bottom of this mat cone. Well, no silver, but uh, I guess on the bright side, it shows you the iron mat can dissolve precious metals. <laughs> Let's see what this stuff weighs. So about 50 grams, 51 grams. First time we got 28 with the copper, we got 40 or 41. Now we got 51. So it's all in there. Well, I'm gonna try something weird. I am trying to break this up to make it real fine and I can't do it. It's really, really hard. So I'm gonna remelt it and pour it in water and get it real fine so we can mix it up again with some flux 
use our iron nail trick and see if I can recover my silver. Well, it looks like that worked. All right, let's do this one more time. We've got 100 grams of anhydrous borax, 100 grams of soda ash, and 50 grams of silica sand. I'm gonna add our shot up iron silver mat. I'm actually kind of encouraged that all the silver's gone because that probably means that it's collecting the platinum as well. Now I'm gonna smelt this back down with iron nails, see if I can reduce the silver back to silver metal, turn the iron mat into FES, which should be absorbed by our soda ash rich slag. Before we look at our slag, I wanted to show you the nails I put in there. I initially put in these six, and hopefully the mat got all used up and then the nails stopped getting eaten up. This one, I added three more nails about 20 minutes before I poured, and they're not eaten at all. I mean, they look like normal nails. Okay, I have a good feeling about this. When I poured it, I thought I saw a little glob of metal come out and not much mat. Here we go. I think I see some metal there. Hey, it worked. Ooh, hot, whoa. Stuff shooting off there all over the place. So that looks really, really good. The silver button is nice and clean. The slag goes all the way down to the silver. There's no matte layer at all. The slag's nice and glassy. I don't see any matte in the slag. That, this is exactly what you want. This is, this, is, this is great. I really, really, really excited about this. I put 20 grams of silver in and we got 20 grams back out. So that is awesome. We recovered all of our silver. And hopefully our platinum group metals are alloyed with this silver. I know silver is a real good collector of that stuff. And if this works, this is going to be just, just great. I've been thinking about this problem for years and we may have just solved it. Well, finally, that worked really well. We got our silver button collector. We got rid of all the iron mat. Hopefully we have all of our PGMs collected in that silver button and nothing in the slag. So now what's gonna happen is I've got some samples here I'm gonna send off for assay. We're gonna assay them for platinum, palladium, and rhodium. Stay tuned for part two, because if this all works out, I'm gonna scale up and we're gonna process a bunch of catalytic converters. So if you're interested in seeing that, be sure to subscribe. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.